there is a song that was written by a gospel artist. I'm not going to mention his name because I don't like him anymore. I used to like him, but if, again, if you know anything about gospel music, when I begin to mention some things, you're going to know what I'm talking about. It was written in 2007, and this song has now been done by several other gospel artists. In other words, they've done their different uh, takes, renditions of the song. And, and I want to read to you, because the first um, uh, 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 line, not the first line, you can say the first verse of the song, and uh, uh, just, just a lay foundation of what God wants to speak to us about tonight. It goes like this, and I'm not going to sing it, no point. It's, uh, he used to be very good, but he's lost his mind. But anyway, never mind. Let me, let me, let me, let me stop rambling. <laughs> it goes exceedingly abundantly, above all, all you could ask or think, according to the power. Charmaine, do you know it? I knew it. Okay, let's carry on. That work is in you. God is able to do just what he said he would do. I wonder if anyone who knows the song. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. Now, we know what that song, you know, the title of that song, it's called He's Able. That God is able to do what, like he basically said. Keep, keep, you know, that's, again, this is when his mind was, I think he kind of came back and lost it again, but never mind. But it is the second, you can say, uh, 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 just before j the, the lyric, you can say the line just before he goes on to say it's able, that I want us to bring our attention to tonight and really is the message or the title of the message that God wants to speak to his church about. And that's simply this. Don't give up on God. Regardless of whatever happens in your life. Or let me put it this way. Regardless of what does not happen. Don't don't you dare give up on God. Amen. Let's read tonight. Amen. Why you and I should not give up on God. Uh, we're going to go to Luke chapter 18. Uh, 1 verse 1 to 8. Let me just change my. There we go. It says, then he, this is Jesus spoke a parable to them, this is his disciples, that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying there was a certain city, a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but Afterwards, he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bear long with them. He's asking a question here. Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Don't give up on God. Father, tonight we thank you, Lord, for your word. You, Lord, your word, God, that is better than life, your word that is sharper than any two-edged sword, God, your word, God, that we can, we, can, we, can, we can place our lives upon the surety of it. I'm asking God tonight, you would minister to precious men and women in this place. Almighty God, I'm asking, send your word to every individual heart. Let it be rightly divided by the Holy Ghost, Father, so they would hear what they need to hear not what they listen out to hearing from. God, I'm praying tonight for anyone here who's lost. I'm praying tonight for anyone's backslidden. I'm praying tonight anyone who's religious. God, rescue them, oh God, especially in this time and hour we're living in. Have mercy and rescue them, oh God. Let them come to the cross, come to the altar, and receive your son. Papa, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, uh, and all God's people said, uh, amen. I want to look first of all very quickly at the tendency we have, the tendency we have. 
Now, the background of our scripture tonight is the Lord Jesus uh, is having one of his confrontations with the Pharisees. You could read it in chapter 17 backwards if you want, you could say it. He's having his confrontation with the Pharisees, uh, and they begin to ask him a question at the end of chapter 17, and they want to know when the kingdom would come. Now, Jesus briefly answers their question, uh, then he turns his attention to his disciples, uh, and he begins to instruct them uh, and then give them, you could say, deeper understanding uh, regarding the kingdom. Them. Now, let me say this tonight, church. It is easy to serve God and praise God when all is going well in life and all is good for you. Amen. It is very easy for us to lift our hands and sing songs. Amen. When things, I mean, are rosy. And tonight, there are days, there are weeks, there are months, there are seasons where all is well and all is going our way. And here is Jesus in our text. You could say he's giving it, amen, to the Pharisees. Amen. He's, he's letting them know about themselves amen, in a very nice way. If I could put it this way, then finally he turns to his disciples and he begins to home in on the disciples and he begins to speak to them and he begins to basically say, listen, you know what, things are, are going your way. I mean, things are very nice, but there's going to be some challenges ahead. I mean, things may be good right now, but things are not always going to be this way. Things are not always going to go your way. So now listen to me, church. It is very easy to get discouraged when something is not working in our favor. And listen to me, when things are not working in our favor tonight, church, we, we, we get discouraged and we tend to give up. I think about times, amen, that times I felt like, you know what, maybe I need to lose, amen, a few pounds. And if you're going to lose weight, you need to do it properly. Uh, it's not just a case of dieting. You have to exercise. It's not just a case of exercise. You have to diet. You have to marry those two things. And here am I, I'm going to go on a diet and I'm going to exercise. And, you know, before I do all this, I make sure I weigh myself uh, and I look at the weight. Okay, I need to cut down some of this weight. Uh, so I diet and I exercise. Uh, and after about a month, I look at the weight and I weigh more after the diet and exercise than I do before the diet exercise. And I become very discouraged. Let me go and get myself a bucket of chicken and deal with this. Because it's very, it becomes very discouraging when things are not going your way. I think about loved ones. Listen tonight, church. There is nothing more discouraging than when there is a rift and you've tried mending that rift. And to some, I mean, maybe you've gone once and that's it. You're not doing it anymore. But for others, amen, you've been met with this constant rejection. And there is a sense of I'm trying to reach out to you. I'm trying to make things work. I'm trying to compromise. But you're not reciprocating. You're not giving back. So you know what? I give up. I I am done with this. Also, think about our livelihood as well, church. Our livelihood can be times in our lives where there is more coming out than there is coming in. And in our minds tonight, I mean, we, here we are, we've been trying to try and budget, to try and make things work. And we come to a place where we say, you know what, it's simply not working. There are others tonight, amen, is your life. Listen, there are people tonight, amen, sadly, who are going to take their life tonight. They're going to suicide, uh, get involved in suicide. Nobody has killed them. Nobody has uh, uh, pushed them off a bridge. They're going to take their own life. And can I stop and say this tonight, church? Hey, Amen. I don't know what's happening in people's lives, but I'll tell you right now, checking out on life is never the answer tonight. Never really is. See, our dealings with the Lord is no different, especially in regards to prayer. Listen, when it comes to prayer, we are prone to lose heart and give up on prayer. The Lord Jesus knew this tonight. That is why he told this parable. And there are a number of reasons we give up and we stop praying. One of the reasons tonight that we give up and we stop praying is that we assume that we are able to handle something in our own strength. And listen, now, this is a very dangerous, dangerous mentality, especially when it is something that we do repeatedly and all the time. There are men and women here, man, you have uh, access to a vehicle and you jump in your car uh, and you drive off without a thought of praying. Uh, and man, because why? You've driven safely before. 
You've gone from point A to point B. It has never, ever been a problem. Eh? And we forget tonight that we depend upon God to protect us from point A to point B. We go to work every single day. We do our jobs. Eh? Amen. We will pray because we know how to do our jobs. Eh? And we forget, amen, that we are dependent upon God to be competent eh, to do our jobs tonight. Listen, this is also true spiritually and in ministry and in service to God, eh? amen, that we can come to a place eh, where we begin to do things and they just simply routine tonight uh, and we just know amen how to dot every i and cross every t we've done this before we can sing we can we can be winsome we can uh, be, be uh, uh, do some admin work and i'll tell you right now church uh, if god has given you a strong and a natural ability amen to do things it is easy to do it without prayer because you know how to do it uh, and you do it very well tonight but my bible says unless the lord builds the house you are laboring. I am laboring. We are laboring in vain. I mean, years ago in South Africa, I was playing tennis with another pastor. Now, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I'm not really, an, I used to be when I was younger, very athletic. I'm not anymore. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I, 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 he, he's, he's still into it. And, and, and he goes, let's go and play tennis. There's a tennis court, not too far from our house. So we went there and, and, and you know, we, we just, you know, knocking him back. And you know, you know when he comes a bit competitive and he's, he's hitting it and I'm, I'm hitting it back and I'm, I'm running and I'm a whack and I'm running and I'm a whack and I'm running and I'm jumping and I'm, running, and I'm running and I'm, at first it's okay. Then I'm finding my heart to do, 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 do. I'm like, whoo, I'm like, ah, yeah, yeah. And finally, I remember I hit it and it was right up and I fell to the ground. I just laid on the ground and it was the first and only time I remember in my life where I felt I was going to pass out. <laughs> Not really. I felt I was going to faint. I have never, ever fainted in my whole life. And by the grace of God, I'm never going to faint. But that time, I really, I was, I was like, my eyes were just flickering. I just felt like I was going to just black out and I'm fighting. I said, like, no, you are not going to stay, just stay. This is so embarrassing my mind. And I'm fighting out of pride just to simply just stay conscious. And just, just, to, just to be there. Could you imagine? I got knocked out playing tennis, literally knocked out. Now, I'm not saying it's embarrassing myself, which I have. But I'm saying to say this tonight, church. If we don't pray, we will faint. We will pass out. We will shut down. And it's simply that simple. So let's consider tonight what we need to know. Now, this parable, and if you carry on reading Luke 18, there's a parable straight after this one. These two are the only parables where you can say the point of the parable we are told up front. In verse 1 tonight, we are told the point of the parables. Then he spoke a parable to them saying, men always ought to pray and not lose heart, not faint, not be discouraged, not give up. This is the point. He's, he's not even hiding anything. This is why I'm telling you this. Men always, not sometimes, always ought to pray. Now tonight, I'm going to say this. I believe it is, it's, a more, it's a lot more than just praying. Even though it is about praying. What do I mean? I was going to get my phone, but there we go. Have you ever tried calling someone before? And for whatever reason, they're not picking up the phone. You really needed to speak to them. You really need to get an answer for something. You needed some information. Uh, you needed something. And you're trying to get them on the other line. And for whatever reason, you can't get them on the phone. Who's ever had that with you before? Okay. Now, I want to ask you if this happened to you. Have you seen somebody from a distance? And you, you, know, you can't reach them. You can't you shout in, but you can see them. If you decide to take your phone, let me just ring them and say, hey, you know, whatever, you know. And you ring them, and they take their phone out. They look at the phone, and they put it back in their pocket. Some of you are very, very embarrassed right now. Maybe you, you've done that to somebody. See, one of the most difficult sides of prayer is persevering when it seems like God is not answering. See, Jesus instructed us to pray. He instructed us to pray tonight. 
He said to pray to the God the Father and say, your will be done. Your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. He instructed us to pray that. But I don't know about you, it is 2,000 plus years later. And that prayer that has been prayed by millions of Christians, millions of times, I would even dare say tonight, amen, throughout the century, is still not answered. If you bring it to a personal level tonight, every single one of us have requested, amen, before God, amen, things you could say that would bring glory to his name. Things that you and I believe, amen, will honor, amen, the name, amen, of our God tonight, amen. And yet it seems like God isn't answering his phone. It seems also like he doesn't even have voicemail. Even worse tonight, it seems like God has looked at the caller ID, has seen your name and my name, Hey, Gabriel, it's your turn. See, tonight, I want you to understand something tonight. Nothing could be further from the truth. In our text, we have a widow. And the thing about this widow God wants you to see is that everything was stacked up against her. I want you to see several things. Number one, she's a woman. In the first century tonight, a woman was a second-class citizen. In fact, in some quarters, she was the property of her father. She's a woman. She's not just a woman. The Bible says she's a widow. Her husband is dead. In other words, she has no man to stand for her. That is massive. I mean, women are losing their mind in the 21st century. It was far worse in the first century. It is, I mean, she has nobody to defend her, no one to provide for her, no one to help her, no one to lift up her status. Amen. She's a woman and a widow to make things worse. The Bible says she's poor tonight. Listen to me. It doesn't matter who you are tonight. Amen. If you have money, money is a game changer. Money really does change everything. Money really can make the world go around a little bit. Amen. It really can make a difference when you have money. The Bible says she's a, wit she's a woman. She's a widow. Amen. She's poor. It doesn't stop there. We are told that she has an adversary. This is somebody, amen, who is intent on making her life a misery. In fact, that word adversary, amen, is also the same word we find in many Peter when it talks about, amen, be vigilant, amen, because your enemy or your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom it meant to devour amen it is a picture of the devil it is a picture of the enemy so what we are talking about tonight amen amen that's happening to this woman is demonic in its nature and on top of it all the only one that could help her doesn't care about anybody in fact she's insignificant to him verse 2 we are told of a judge who neither feared God nor cared about people. Jesus says in verse 7 that he was not just a judge. He was an unjust judge. He was a crooked judge. He was not a good judge. He was not somebody, man, that you and I would depend upon to do his job. You can say properly tonight. But I want you to see tonight this judge, as powerful as he was, also had a problem. Now, here's his problem tonight. His problem tonight was that this poor, insignificant widow would not give up. What does verse 1 say? Men ought to what? Always pray. And not lose heart. Not be discouraged. Not give up tonight. Here is a woman tonight that refused to give up. Now, Elizabeth and I, many people have said that this widow is us. And God is the judge. And if you want something from God, just keep pestering him. And in the end, God will get fed up and will have to do what you want. If you just, if you just, if you just persist in prayer, God will relent to your will. Let me stop and say this tonight. Prayer is not about me trying to get God to do what I want. Prayer tonight is not me trying to get God to do my will. Prayer tonight, what it is, it is me lining up my will 
with the will of God. It is my will and God's will in sync. It is my will and God's will at one. It is my will and God's will, not amen, uh, 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 in, 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 in schism or uh, uh, in, in, in disruption or, or in some form of amen, argument tonight, amen. It is God's will and the will of man, amen, married and meshed them together. I think about the account of when David uh, uh, went to uh, uh, Ziklag and, he, and, and, and he's there with, with his men and he joined with the enemies of God and, and he went to join with the Philistines and they went out uh, on, 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 you could say, uh, on, 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 on a skirmish, you could say. And the Bible says the Amalekites came and they took David's wife and his children and, and all the men that were there. They took their wives and their children and their goods and their valuables and, and they took them and they held them captive. I and mean, they held them uh, uh, hostages. And the Bible tells us uh, uh, David's men wanted to stone David. They wanted to kill David. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. He began to encourage himself. Uh, and one of the first things he did, he spoke to the high priest Abiphai, tells him to bring him uh, the, 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 the vestment, uh, uh, the, the urim of the furim, uh, and this was a way in which uh, people would get a hold of God, and somehow, we don't know how up to the day, eh, but somehow through the stones that are upon the, the chest of the high priest, uh, he's able to get in contact with God, and David brings, called the high priest, I need you to come, and uh, he needs to get a hold of God for me, and he basically asks us, uh, I mean, two questions, uh, and he says, should I go after them? God, they have taken my wife. They've taken my children. They've taken my goods. They've taken our horses. They've taken all the things that I value in this world. Should I go after them? God, I need permission. Let me know. Should I go after these people? Amen. And what, amen, if we can bring it to where we live tonight, amen. We can say to ourselves, like, you know what? I want to go after some things. I want to try and claim some things. You don't understand. I want to go after that woman. You don't understand. I want to go after that man. I want that job. I want them to move away from town and do whatever I want to do tonight. I want this. Oh, I want that tonight. Amen. But here is David. He comes to his place that says, even though I want this thing, I've got to get God's permission because what I want more than anything is I want to be in the will of God. See, David didn't just do what he wanted. He didn't just take matters in his own hand as some people do. He wanted to be in sync with God. And he asks God, should I? And God says, go after them. And once he gets permission, he asks God another question. He says, all right, God, you give me permission to, to go after them. God, will I overtake them? God, will I get this stuff back? And God replies and says, yes. Now listen to me. Then he begins to pursue what God says that you can have. Do you know what prayer is tonight? Or should I put it this way? Prayer does not end tonight when you get up from your knees and say amen. Prayer is the pursuit of what God has given you and I permission to have. And tonight you must understand if we ask God for something and God says it's okay for us to go and get it tonight. If you and I do not go and get what God has said it's okay to have, then you have not prayed. My people will pray, God, God, give me a job. God, God, give me a job. And God says, I'm going to bless you with your job. God brings scripture, brings his word, amen, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to just back up, amen, what he says. But we stay home and do nothing. If you don't go after what God says, okay, you have not prayed at all. You simply just made your knees very bad. You're going to need wraps, amen, uh, 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 you know, uh, to help you get you going again. Physiotherapy. There you go. Waste of time. See, many people see prayer as God giving me what I want, when I want, that he's obligated to do what I want, no matter what. He has to intervene for me. And when they discover that is not the case, when they don't see instant results, we give up. Can I say tonight, church, don't give up on God. And what will help you and help me in regards to this. And this is the message behind the parable. I believe this is the point Jesus is making by this parable. Is this. God is not this judge. See, so the parable tonight is not saying this is how God is. The parable is saying this is who God is not. 
He's not this, he's not like this corrupt, unjust, wicked judge at all tonight. See, what we are seeing is a contrast. This woman was a widow and a stranger. Church tonight, amen, we are not widows. And we definitely are not strangers. The Bible calls us the bride of Christ. But also it calls us, amen, the children of God. I think about the story about a soldier, amen, doing the, 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 the um, uh, uh, civil war in America. He's sitting outside the White House and he's trying to get into the White House. And each time he's been rejected to get into the White House. And a young boy sees him and, and comes to him and says, Mr. So why are you sitting there looking so sad? He's well, so I'm trying to get into the White House to speak to the president. Uh, the war is over and I, 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 my family have lost this land that we used to have. And I'm trying to show the president to bring my case and let him know, President, this what's happened president could you help me get my land back and anytime i come the soldiers block me with their guns they they cross the berets and they will not allow me to enter and the young boy listens to this is not a problem he says get up follow me and begins to follow him and they come to the place of the soldiers and they point their guns and suddenly i mean they lift their guns and they step out of the way and they begin to walk through the white house they come to a door he knocks upon it and then the, the, there's a voice Come in, he comes in, and the soldier right now is standing before the president of the United States. He's looking at this young boy, his mouth is open, he's standing the whole thing. And he goes, Oh, mister, I didn't tell you, the president is my dad. He was young, dad Lincoln. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Listen tonight, church, we have access into the very presence of God. We have access, amen, to the whole power that runs and rules the universe. And even as a father, amen, my children, they know and they still know tonight uh, that they can come into our bedroom uh, anytime they want. Amen. This is the most sacred place uh, you can say in our house. Uh, they can come into our bedroom anytime they want. But as they've grown, we've taught them to do one thing. Knock first. And here's the thing tonight, church. When they knock, we have never told them, don't come in. Sometimes we just told them, wait. But we've always given them access. We've always allowed them. After we just come in and we just sit down on our bed, you know, jump around and act like you don't have your own bed and be a fool. But afterwards, we're going to kick you out. But now they allowed them to come into our bedroom. Even as big kids, they do that. Listen to me tonight, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 that we to ask and what we shall receive. Seek, and guess what? We are going to what? Fine. Here it is. Knock, and the door shall be opened. This is a promise that God has given us. I love what my pastor says. Uh, that the church is the ruined class in the spiritual realm tonight. Listen, church, amen. We are not widows tonight. Amen. We are the bride of Christ and the children of God. But also this woman, she had no friends. In other words, there's nobody that can stand for her, encourage her, and help her through this difficult time. But oh, what a friend we have in Jesus Christ tonight. She has no promises to stand upon when she prays. But when we pray tonight, church, we claim the promises of God. She's poor. She has nothing. But the Bible tells us that we have God's riches in glory by Christ Jesus. She comes to a court of law. But again, Hebrews 4.16 tells us, church, when we come, we come into the throne of grace. And this is the whole point tonight is this. If this unjust judge will listen to a widow that he has nothing to do with tonight, how much more will our heavenly father listen to his children when we pray? You see, when we get this, it really does change everything. See, here's the point tonight. Some people see God like this judge. He's distant and he's dark. He's aloof. I, you know, just you over there. I'm over here, and he's dark. He's just unjust. He don't he doesn't care about anybody but his own heavenly agenda tonight. That's not true. See tonight, you need to come to prayer with a mindset that this is not what God is like. Because if you think God is a certain way, you're not going to pray. Nor would you persevere in your prayers. 
And what we want to see tonight, or what we need to see tonight, is this is more so about who we are praying to than even our prayers. Because when you know God tonight, when you know who he is tonight, when you understand that this is who God is, you should not give up on God tonight. You should not throw in the towel on God tonight. And man, if this woman's persistence paid off, how much more will our persistence in our prayers pay off to our God? So let's close and I look at rest assured. Because one of the keys in answered prayer, I really believe, is to be persuaded about the character of God. Let me say something like prayer is underrated. And sadly, by the people of God. So how could I say that? Because if we, if we really believe God, we'll pray to God. It's underrated. We don't, it's not a big deal for us. It's not, it's not like nothing special. We have the most powerful force, weapon, whatever you want to label it, in the whole entire universe tonight. And we don't use it. Listen to what Paul tells Second Tim, in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2. Listen to what 12, chapter 1, verse 12. This is this. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have, what he has committed. Sorry, uh, he's, able to, he's able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Again, in Romans 8, 37 to 39, this, this has been spoken in so many funerals. They meant to bring hope and comfort all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height or death nor anything shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus here is Paul, he's making it very clear in two different circumstances how much he's persuaded in his God, how much he's convinced, amen, in the character of his God and who his God is. We need to come to a place where we say that my God is good, amen, my God loves me, my God is able, my God is for me. And what God is saying in our parable is I'm not the way you think I am tonight. You don't have to twist my arm, amen, to get certain things done that he is ready to save. He's ready to provide. He's ready to step in tonight. And we need to be like Paul. Paul was convinced. Paul was persuaded about this. Amen. That this is who his God is. Listen, the prayer of the righteous has mighty power. Listen, the prayer of the righteous has raised the dead to life. The prayer of the righteous has healed the broken bodies. The prayer of the righteous, amen, has stopped the rain from falling. The prayer of the righteous, amen, has caused the planet to, to stop spinning. The prayer of the righteous has caused the heart of kings and dignitaries to be changed. Listen tonight, there is power in prayer, especially in these last days, to do the work and the will of God tonight. So we need to be convinced about the character of God. But lastly, we need to be convinced about the chronology of God. A big reason we give up is because of delays. Let me give you one word tonight, don't. We find delays very hard when it comes to God. But there's a word that almost froze us if we read our text, and that's verse 8, is speedily. Will he not speedily? Will he not speedily? You could say, answer your prayers. Some of you say, huh? God has been, as the young ones would say, Lord, it's been a minute. <laughs> it's been a long minute. Where you get speedily from? I've been, waiting, I've been praying. I've been praying about some things for, listen, let's be real tonight. I've been praying about some things for a couple of decades now. Still ain't happened yet. We, what, what, what part is speedily here? Did, was it was a, was a, was a, was a, a scribe's error? Tonight, God's delays are not because he's doing nothing. God's delays are because he's preparing something. Listen, God is always 
answering prayer. In fact, there is not a prayer tonight that God hasn't answered. God has answered every single prayer. In Romans chapter 8, verse uh, 28, it says these words, and we know that all things work together for good for those who are the called and according, amen, to his purpose. That all things, good, bad, ugly, confusion, I'm not sure, I'm sure, they all somehow come together and they work together for good. And what that means tonight is that God is working in all things at all times so that all things work together to accomplish his purposes. That's what it means tonight. That God is involved in every single thing. There is not a minute detail, amen, that somehow he misses or he skips tonight. In fact, I'll say this, the moment we present a request that is in the will of God tonight, amen, God is working. The moment you pray according to the will of God, Remember, it has to be married. The moment you, when you bring a request that God looks and says, you know, you know what, this request matches what I want, I'm going to go to work. It's like that song we sing tonight, church, that even when we don't see it, he's working. That God amen, begins to go to work in the good and the bad and the ugly and the confusing and the things in light and the things that are in darkness, the things we're not sure and the things we're sure. God begins to go to work tonight, amen, to bring those things or that issue or that request to pass. And if you hang in there, one day, listen to me, one day, you see the answer. I saw this video of this uh, lady. I think she's American, only America. And for nearly three months, to be, to be exact, 82 days, for nearly three months, she's been setting up this domino sets for nearly three months. This domino sets for nearly three months. And when you look at it, it's a complete madness. So three months she's trying to do this. Finally, when it's done, what took three months? She just hits one domino. And she sets in motion this chain reaction. And by the time he finishes, it reveals this wonderful, beautiful, glorious picture that was hidden behind all you can say, the controlled chaos. Tonight, that is just like our God tonight. Our God tonight is, is, is at work in every single one of our lives tonight. He's putting one thing in place, another thing in place, another thing in place. And he's, been, he's, he's taking his time and making sure everything, amen, is there and is right and is correct. And amen, the moment, amen, the results, amen, are there. What happens, amen, you have something that's just not stunning. You have a swift answer. What we need to understand is all the pieces it is important all the pieces are in their place if you're going to get the results that you so want to see. So our world tonight is filled with negative things that affect us. But when all the pieces are in place, when God says it's time, make no mistake, it's going to come swiftly, quickly. And what we understand is this tonight, what is slow for us is swift for God. Because the Bible says to God, 1,000 days is like one day. <laughs> and a day is like a thousand days. A day is like a thousand years. And what you and I are losing our minds for 23 years. It's been 2,000 years we're praying thy kingdom come. It's been this, I've been waiting for this, I've been waiting for that. God says, huh? Less than a minute second to me. But make, make no mistake, when God does it, it's going to be beautiful tonight. See, persistent prayer is a demonstration of faith in God, who while at times may, may, may delay his answers, is to know that he's going to always act decisively and justly when it comes to his people. So I believe tonight the state of your prayer life 
reveals the condition of your faith. So can I ask you a question tonight? Have you begun to lose heart? Because this, this, this is all God wants us to know this today. Don't give up on me. He's doing something. He's doing something based on his character and he's doing something based on his timing. And both are perfect in all of their ways. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes tonight, church. Amen. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. We serve such a good God tonight. And there are going to be things in life that are going to try and convince us, give up. God's not good. God's not there. God's not for you. Take matters in your own hands. And when we take matters in our own hands, it ends in a disaster. And now we're discouraged. Now we're just throwing the towel completely. He's a good God. He's a great God. Don't give up on him. Very quickly, maybe you're here tonight, you're not right with God. Maybe you're here tonight, you're not born again, you haven't given your life to Christ. See, we live in a world that has given up on God because everything that's wrong is called an act of God. But anything good happens, we, 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 we give, we ascribe the goodness to anything else but God. But anything bad happens, somehow God this and God that and God this. Tonight, he's a good God. The Bible tells us when he created the world, all he was to declare was his goodness. This is good. It is good. He put the sun. It is good. The stars. It is good. The sea. It is good. The animals. It is good. Good. When he finishes, it's very good. But you see what happens when sin came in. When we rebelled against God, when we disobeyed God, when we took matters into our own hands and stopped obeying the word of God. We end up in the mess we have today. If things are not getting better, they're going to get worse. But tonight, God has a message for you, my friend. And even though you may have given up on him, he hasn't given up on you. And what he needs you to know more than anything right now, he's a good God. You need him more than you need anything. What do you need anybody? And he's calling you. He's dealing with you. He's led you here to a place where you can make a decision for him. Very quickly, under the sound of my voice, you're in this building, you're not right with God, you're not saved, you're not born again, or maybe you've backslid and you're away from God. I cannot emphasize just how good this God you are running away from, this God you're trying to justify not being with, I cannot emphasize just how good he is. When you come to Christ, you've gained, you've gained it all. There's nothing you don't lack. But in this world, you're going to lack so much. Come to Jesus tonight. Give your life to Christ. If that's you tonight, the Spirit of God is here. Say, Pastor, I'm all right with God. I'm not saved. I'm not born again. I'm away from God. If that's you, they do one thing. Just lift your hand up and put it down tonight. We want to pray with you. God loves you. I see that hand. Anybody else? Slip your hand. Here's my hand. I've doubted the goodness of God. That's why I backslid. I've doubted the goodness of God. That's why I've never walked into a church and, and prayed to receive Jesus. I've looked at the world and all the mess that's going on. And if God is good, why this? If God is good, why that? Because we are away from him. And when we come to him, the first thing he gives us is sight to see things for how they really are. And we'll see tonight that we have messed up and he hasn't. We continue to mess up when we distance ourselves. But God can put us back together again if we come to him. Very quickly, under the sound of my voice, join his honest hand. He said, that's me. I'm away from God or I backslid. I want to come back to Jesus. Lift your hand up tonight. Lift it up and put it down quickly. Up and down. I want to pray for you. Up and down. Final time. It's my hand. I want to pray. Amen. Just look at me. You mean that? Come, come, come. Amen. Mr. Shai, can you pray with her? Thank you very much. 
want to speak to God's people tonight very quickly tonight. Christians, please listen to me tonight. And listen good. A lack of prayer in the child of God's life is a lack of faith. 